When choosing to vote in the presidential election, there are a few things you should look for in a candidate. The first is that a candidate who will fulfill goals that you would like to see accomplished. The second is a candidate who is consistent in his views and does not change his mind all the time. The third is a candidate who shares your values and who you feel represents most of your opinions. A few examples of uh, what most people would like to see happen in America is enacting a plan to revitalize the economy and uh, introducing a plan to greatly reduce national debt. Questions that most citizens normally and typically ask are questions of foreign policy, such as when and how do you intervene and what will be your support. There are also questions of the role of government. What is the government's role in meeting needs of the people and in providing opportunity for people? What is the government's role in reflecting the core values of our society? There are also questions of health care and questions of military. Citizens should learn how to develop skills such as critical thinking and analyzing in order to make the best educated decision that they can. While reading news stories, take what you read and go deeper than that. Find out how to get all possible information in order to make an educated decision and then act on that appropriately. While listening to presidential debates or interviews, listen for discussions on your view of things. Write down or remember what particularly strikes you about what one candidate says. Decide for yourself what their major view is on a certain issue and if you agree or disagree. The ability to tell the difference between biased statements and unbiased statements is just as important as being able to critically think. There are a few simple steps that you can take to test articles, media, and conversation of biased statements. Ask questions. Ask yourself, who made this statement? Do they know what they are talking about? Then, look for the evidence that supports their statement and apply any personal knowledge or experience. Do the supporting details hold up to all that you know about the topic? If you don't know much about the topic, be sure to do your research. Sometimes the truth of the point being made may need to be verified with further research. Is the author believable? Do they make sense? And what qualifies this person as an authority on the subject? Bias statements are more commonly found when controversial issues are brought up, so be sure to look at if they showed both sides of the issue in equal amounts, and if they didn't, find out why they left out that information. Assumptions and circular reasoning are harder to spot than bias statements, but are just as plentiful. For those who don't know what a circular argument is, it is drawing a conclusion from an assumption, which is dependent on the conclusion. In other words, you are not actually proving anything. Although the argument appears to sound intelligent and persuasive, it is important to remember that people are often easily persuaded by majority attitudes or behavior than by reason. In order to even begin to decide what candidate you want to follow up on through the campaigns, you need to know your stance on all controversial questions. Look at all of the major issues presented in the world today. People discuss abortion rights, embryonic stem cells, the Patriot Act, illegal immigrants, same-sex marriage, and universal health care, to name a few. Decide your stance on it. Do your research and know what each issue is about before you decide. Then, think about the weight that each has on your life. How important is it to you? Find a candidate who shares the key and important views with you and follow up on them throughout their campaign. If you can't make up your mind, compare the candidates and find out which one you agree with the most and who you would feel represents your key values. In choosing a candidate, people make unintended assumptions and judgments about a person by the way that they carry themselves and look. An example of this would be the first televised debate between Richard Nixon and John F. Kennedy in 1960. Nixon had looked sickly after his two-week stay in the hospital. He was 10 pounds underweight, sweating profusely, and the backdrop was painted the same gray color as his suit. On the other side, John F. Kennedy had just finished a campaign in California. He was tan and extremely fit. The television viewers believed Kennedy to have won because of the way that the two presented themselves, but the people listening to the debate on the radio believed Nixon to be the winner because of the ideas that he presented. I share this example to say that people are highly influenced by what they see and use that to cast their final votes. 
Beware of the unintended assumptions that are made when you see a candidate. Their ideas are what count. There are a few things that you should walk away with from this video. Know what to look for in a presidential candidate and then vote accordingly. Use critical thinking skills when reading news articles or listening to debates. Identify biased statements and learn the truth behind those. Look for assumptions and circular reasoning. Choose your stance on issues and find a candidate who has a similar stance and then vote.